am I glad you're not hurt. Those canoes aren't very stable. It was just one of those things. <laughs> just one of those things, Mac. I admit it, it was stupid. We were out testing this baby, and I thought we'd sneak up on you and make a few waves. I guess I blew it, huh? Um, the sound you hear is the wind rushing through my brother's head. Look, all I can say is I'm sorry. Just let me have a list of all your stuff, and I'll replace it. You got any diving gear? You can't dive here. The bottom drops off, and besides that, the mud is so thick you couldn't see two feet. Believe me, I've been down there. We're both really sorry. Really. My name is Clint Crockett, if you want to know. I'm Karen. Smith. What, just Smith? Pickett Smith. Hello? It is a canoe. And there is a stranger with him. Damn it, Stuart, get down there and find out what the devil's going on. Jason, they'll be up here in two minutes. If it's too much of an inconvenience for you. Badminton. How about tennis? I play. Clint loves to play games. He's sure to win. How are you at ping pong? Lousy. Hey, look, I just want to dry out a little bit, then I'll be on my way. Well, you better forget it, pal. You have fresh blood for our fun and games. Now, how would you like to partake in, in a nice, friendly wage? At least we owe you a drink or two and some lunch. Really, I don't want to intrude. Intrude? No, tonight's very family, very traditional. This afternoon is practically picnic. We'd love to have you. How about it, buddy? All right. Mr. Smith, this is my uncle, Stuart Martindale. Pickett Smith. Mr. Martindale. How do you do? What happened? I was testing the new engine. Ran into Smith's canoe. And I swamped him. It seemed the canoe swamped you. Something like that. Mr. Smith accepted our offer to stay for lunch. Delightful. I'll tell Maybell. You tell Jason. As soon as Grandpa gets a look at you, uh, Karen will show you to my room. You will do that, won't you, Karen? I will. I'll get you some dry clothes. See you then. Brent, where are you going? Not a chance close, Grandpa. Karen, what's going on? Grandpa, this is Pickett Smith. Mr. Smith, Jason Crockett. Hello, Mr. Crockett. My cousin, Michael Martindale. Uh, well, Karen? Grandpa, Clint didn't know what he was doing out there, and we nearly ran Mr. Smith down. So we fished him out. Now we're going to offer him a little food and drink after he gets changed out of his wet clothes. Just a moment. 
Mr. Smith, I saw you out on the lake early this morning. Now, you've been paddling around this island for hours, taking pictures. Yes, sir. Don't you know it's against the law? Grandpa. No, sir, I didn't. There's a sign out there that says private property. Who are you with, anyway? I'm a freelance photographer. I'm doing a pollution layout for an ecology magazine. Take any pictures of frogs lately? I saw the biggest bullfrog this morning. This big. Damned creatures are everywhere. Croak all night. Well, you know I sent Grover out to take care of that. Mr. Smith, you happen to see a man spraying in that small bay on the North Shore? Lady, you all, this man has got to change out of his wet clothes. Grover's not back yet. He'll be back, Karen. I'm gonna have to call my editor. Can I use your phone? Oh, sure, right there. And when you finish, I'll introduce you to the rest of the family. It's dead. Oh, you'll get a dial tone. We're on a regular line. It's dead. It was probably just a holiday. He'll come back on soon. Oh, Karen, look. Look what the kids did. Cute, huh? It's adorable. <laughs> uh, Jenny, uh, this is Mr. Pickett Smith. This is Clint's wife, Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. Oh. Well, where's Clint? He's upstairs changing his wet clothes. What happened? <laughs> well, it's a long story. <laughs> yeah, it usually is. Come on. I'll introduce you to the rest. Okay, you all, time out. Quick hello to Pickett Smith. Uh, this is my Aunt Iris. How do you do? How are you? And uh, my cousin, Kenneth Martindale, and Miss Bella Berenson. Pickett Smith. Hi. Welcome to Crockett Land. Hi. Not quite awake yet, Mr. Pickett, but I can hardly wait to see what you look like. Well, now you can take that shower that you were promised. Uh, Clinton's Jenny's bedroom is uh, the second door on the right upstairs, okay? Okay. Kenneth, where do you suppose he came from? Mom, your guess is as good as mine. There. Jenny, do you think Daddy will like it? The monarch I just caught. I think it's the largest specimen ever found in this state. And the other one I got at the Vermont farm. Butterflies are really in, Mrs. Martindale. Oh, I'm so glad I'm in, Billa. Now, where's that metallic paper? I must get this wrapped before lunch. Didn't I tell you that a week out here would be something else? Do you find it a little weird for a middle-aged lady to chase butterflies? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, if that's her thing, I do believe she's entitled. Me, myself, I just never had the energy to run after anything. Perfect timing, pal. Caught you looking up my jersey, didn't I? Looks like you were quite a jock. Well, it was my wife's idea. You see, she's still impressed with me ever since I was the school's highest scorer. Oh, yeah? I don't think I've ever heard of Midwest Valley Central. Well, not everybody has. But I hope my two go there. You'll meet them later. That picture, that's Jenny when she was a cheerleader. Pretty girl. Yeah, I'd say she was, too. Always was. Recognize old Clint? Huh? I'm the same weight now I was when I was playing. Not one extra pound. That's really funny. Jenny's just got a few more extra little tiny bags under her eyes. That's about all. Come on, why don't we help ourselves to some dry clothes? I think that'll make us both feel pretty good, huh? Do it, girl. Do it. Yeah. Pretty. 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 <laughs> Uh -huh. Mr. Kenneth, I have a message from your grandfather. With or without the profanity, Charles. I was told to quote him exactly. Has your damn watch stopped? <laughs> message received, Charles. 
<laughs> Has your agency ever thought of packaging your grandfather and giving him a new image? He knows he's not popular with the public or his family. And he revels in it. Well, he treats me nice enough. He wouldn't dare admit that we're shaking him up. <laughs> Nobody ever invites guests Fourth of July. And I bring you, a girl, <laughs> worse, a sexy model. <laughs> that ain't all either. But would Jason ever admit we shook him up? Never. Well, looks like most of the family have joined us. Clint, any reason why your children should be 12 minutes late? Where are they, Jenny? Grandfather, you know how difficult it is to get those kids away from the pool. And on a day like this? Well, I told them. I told those kids 20 minutes ago to get out of their wetsuits and change for lunch. Jenny, far be it for me to tell you how to raise your children. If you forbid them the use of the pool until they've learned the rules of being at meals on time. Well, it's not my fault. I'll make sure they understand that, sir. Hey, everybody, look, look. Look what I found. Look what I found. He's gigantic. Don't be so stupid, Jay. Don't, Mike. That's mine. Now, listen. Jay, Tina, you're both late. Now, go sit down and eat your food. Jay, you were right. He was gigantic. Oh, I hate those things, and they make so much noise. Just making everybody crazy. No oh, nonsense, Jenny. You see many frogs along the shore, Mr. Smith? Yes, sir, a few. More than you'd consider usual? I guess so, but sometimes they have a summer like this. Animals overpopulate. They'll die off by next year. You sound like you might be an ecology expert, are you? Yes, sir, to an extent. You see, I have an impatient family. They can't wait till next year. How do they get rid of the frogs now? Well, it seems like everyone in our family's hung up on frogs. They really do keep us awake every night. Those of us who don't consume a fifth of vodka every night, that is. Which reminds me. How do we get rid of them? I have suggested pouring oil on the water to choke them off. That would help, wouldn't it, Mr. Smith? Yeah, but you'd be killing a lot of other things at the same time. It'd make my home smell like a refinery. Well, I can't sleep. It's not the end of the world, Jenny. Well, it seems so. And with all our technology and all my money, we still can't get rid of these frogs. Interesting, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. But you'll think of something. Well, I suggest you do me a favor. Go take a good look round. Come back, give me an honest report so I can quieten down this nervous group. All right. You have a deal. Good. These things feel a lot better. Thank Maybell for driving for me, will you? I sure we will. And congratulations. You seem to have impressed Grandpa. That's good. You have a nice trip. OK, I'll see you later. Mr. Smith, I see you a moment. That'll be all, Michael. <clears throat> Just on my way out, Mr. Crockett. Do you mind closing the door? Now, if I might ask a small favor. It's obvious you can't see the whole island before dark. No, I don't think I have to see the whole island. But if you would take the north road, Keep your eyes peeled for my man Grover. He left about 6 o'clock this morning to do some spraying up in that little bay up there where the mosquitoes and the frogs are pretty bad. But it's my belief he's AWOL with a little lady friend from across the lake. And if you do see him, will you tell him I want him? Yes, sir. I'll be glad to. You want to take one of these? No, no sir. I don't think a stuffed bullfrog would add a thing.
Maybelle? Oh, I couldn't, not now. Oh, come on, live a little bit. Oh, well, why not? But don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a toast of Crockett Land. Mm. You know, um, my name's Maybelle, too. Kind of thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> so, Bella. Yeah? There's always hot coffee and a friendly conversation in the kitchen if you ever need it. Thanks, Mary Bell, because I think I might be needing it. Sorry. Oh, well, just kind of relax, and you'll get it after a while. That's an unusual dress, Bella. Did you make it? No, I didn't make it. I designed it. And I think it's fantastic. We are talking about the dress, aren't we? That noise is driving me insane. Won't they ever stop? Stop complaining, Jenny. It'll stop soon. Daddy, what if Grover's lying in a ditch somewhere? I hope he's not hurt. Serve him right if he is. Oh, Grandpa, that's awful. <laughs> you make it sound like the worst of the ugly rich. We are the ugly rich. We're entitled to be ugly, Karen. God knows we pay enough taxes. Daddy, did you know the government is forcing us to put strainers on our paper mills? It's called anti-pollution control, Iris. Well, um, what's the difference what it's called? It costs millions, and our dividends will be shot to hell. <laughs> Did you find Grover's Jeep? Far into the island? There's still no sign of Grover. No. Well, I'm not surprised. You can't depend on help these days. Not unless they've been with you from the very beginning. longer, Maybell. In a few moments. Thanks for telling me first. I appreciate it. No use frightening the others. Today of all days. Yeah, I'm gathered tomorrow's quite a celebration. This week with my family is the one permanent thing left in my life. Fifteen years ago, nature threw me for a loss. Dumped me in this chair. We have four birthdays in July. Mine, Karen's, Stuart, and Michael. We've celebrated together for years. And we'll celebrate until I'm a hundred. Right here. Yes, sir. Will you have my birthday eve? Congratulations. I'm sure it'll be a great day for everyone. I couldn't reach the village. I'll have Clint or someone run me back across the lake. What do you mean? Stay here. Stay here till morning. 
What about the body? standing around for. Let's eat. Frogs attacking windows, snakes and chandeliers. Those aren't exactly normal things, Mr. Crockett. I don't think there's much to worry about. I'm sure I can get the state to spray some pesticides. Yes, sir, I'm sure you can. You'd kill a hell of a lot of other things, too. Mr. Smith, that is where you and I part company. I still believe man is master of the world. Does that mean he can't live in harmony with the rest of it? You call that horrible racket out there harmonious? Mr. Crockett, I know it sounds strange as hell, but what if nature were trying to get back at us? <laughs> Nonsense. Then how do you explain it? We just sit and wait. Seems like all I ever do around here is babysitting. Hope they don't do something that might annoy him, and they always do family. Boy, they don't like me. You. You're out drinking in that speedboat all day and all night. Well, I hate it. It's only a couple of weeks a year. Yes, sir. No, sir. All day long. The only one that matters is him. Well, what about me? Shouldn't your wife come first? Listen to me. I said, listen to me. Now, that old man is not going to live forever. And that means a million dollars or more to me. And all we have to do is just play our cards right. I don't think that I can stand. Just shut your mouth. Hi. You all right? Sure. Just look around a little bit. I'm getting like Jenny. Frogs are driving me crazy, too. You know, it's like a different world out here at night. This place must seem like a different place to you day or night. How long have you been doing this? What? Taking pictures. <laughs> Only real job I've ever had. You always work outdoors? Yeah, whenever I can. You must really like it. Yeah, I like it. Why? <laughs> well, it lets me travel a lot. See a lot of country. Meet some good people. I'm on time. Nobody on my back. 
freedom, I guess. What were you and Grandpa talking about tonight? Nothing, just talking. Did you have to close the door? When you came back in the Jeep tonight, I knew something had happened. Now, what was it? Come on, Pickett, tell me. What is going on here that Grandpa doesn't think his own family is entitled to know? I just don't know what it is. All right. It's getting damp out here. I'm going inside. You want to come? No, you go ahead. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you, children. Getting all ready for the excitement? When do we get to do the rum and candles and sparklers? When it's time, when it's dark, after the birthday cake and everything. You're old enough to know that by now. Well, don't just stand there. Go off and play somewhere. Okay. Another year going by, Mr. Crockett. Another happy day for everybody. Yeah, thank you, Maybell. Another year ended, another year beginning. Charles seeing with the decorations? Oh, yes, sir. God forbid I should come before his training program. Not quite like it was in college, huh? That's just the trouble, Grandfather. It's just like it was in college. Jenny, perhaps you'd like to help with the decorations, if you've got the time. Thank you. I'd love to. Floorboards creak too much. I'm sorry Jason Crockett doesn't keep his floorboards in better condition. I liked talking to you last night. We'll have to do more of it. King of the law. Hey, Smith. Not here. Where is he? Michael, when you're through pounding, why don't you warm me up a little bit? No. No, I don't want to. Oh, come on. Come on. Just don't hurt me. The idea is to just step on that log, stay on it, put your left hand behind your back, like that, and that's all you have to do. Just like that. Come on, Michael, get him. I've had enough. The boy's a loser. Boyfriend get lost? 
Mm. Wish I could be so lucky. How would you like to fight me for my log? <laughs> That's really not my kind of game. What is your kind of game? I don't think you dig it. It's a little slower than that and uh, sophisticated. Try me. I'm not gonna be here that long. Morning, Mr. Crockett. Happy birthday. All uh, right, thank you. Had your breakfast? Yes, sir, thank you. Hey, Smith, how about some games? Later, Clint, I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. Thought maybe I'd look around your aisle a little more, Mr. Crockett, if you don't mind. I'll check out the phone line for you. Michael, why don't you take the Jeep? Go and see if you can find a line down somewhere. Certainly, Grandpa. Mr. Smith, seems to me you've got something on your mind. Can you tell me about it? Well, sir, I don't want to spoil your day here, but something's got to be done with that body. I'll tell you something else, Mr. Crockett. You've overdone it with those pesticides and poisons here. I'm afraid to think what's happening. There you are, Mr. Michael, just in case. Thanks, Maybell.
I believe I've thought of everything. New badminton birds, a new net, and four new rackets. Oh, and Kenneth, would you go into the greenhouse, dear, and get some cymbidiums and some of those pale green orchids? You know, the little teeny tiny ones? I just don't have time, and Maybelle isn't quite up to it. Oh, a papillial glaucus. I must get my net right away. It's the least I can do. Now, wait a minute. I want to show you my new beanbag punch. No way. Son, go get him. Hey, cut her out, Dad. Mix it up with him. Show him. I'd love to see him on his ass. I don't want to show anybody anything. Well, if you're a chicken, at least you could find something useful to do with yourself. I suppose I could, um, put up a target for rifle practice. Or I could, uh, make sure that there are proper number of bean bags. I might even volunteer to play gin with Granddaddy. But you won't. <sighs> no, I won't. Cymbidiums, Cymbidium. Cymbidium. Cymbidium, Cymbidium. I hope you realize was your last meal on the Crockett's. Father, uh, I don't know when you want to start the games. Not everybody's back yet. But uh, you usually do start by now. Who's not back? Michael and who else? Iris went off after a butterfly about a half an hour ago. Kenneth said something about the greenhouse, about choosing some flowers. 
Karen, go in the house and see if he's there. If he is, tell him to get out here. All right, Grandpa. Jason, I'm sure Iris won't be very long. You're so sure? What are you standing there for? Go find her. Okay. Easy. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. There's a lot of strategy in this once you get the hang of it. Oh, is that what you call it down here? No, that's what we call it down here. That was nice. Charles, have you seen Kenneth? He asked Maybell to get out some bowls for the flowers. That was an hour ago. Well, that's peculiar. Grandpa's getting very impatient. Have you seen Kenneth? No. What's the matter? Is that still not working? Mm -hmm. What is going on here? I don't know. Your grandpa's getting pretty tough out there. I thought you were the one supposed to be able to handle him when nobody else could. Yeah, and then comes a point when nobody can. I better find Kenneth or there are going to be some real fireworks. Colonel. What is it? What does he see? What's going on? Clint, get me out of here. Clint, keep your wife quiet. Grandfather, something terrible is happening. You be quiet. Mr. Crockett, we all know how important your plans are to you. You couldn't possibly know. I'm going ahead with this celebration today just as I planned, just as I've celebrated all my life. Nothing's going to stop it. Sure? How? He's dead all right, Mr. Crockett. There's bottles of poison broken all over that greenhouse. He's been asphyxiated. Karen, take me inside.
plan, I'm going to need your help. I'd be glad to do anything I can, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Charles. How do you figure? I don't know, Charles. Is there any place we can put it? Yes, sir. I'll show you.
Thank you, Mabel. Grandpa, I think that we've got to, we've, we've just got to get out of here. About Mike, Iris, and Stuart. When we get help, then we can find out now what's happened to... Now listen to me, all of you. I'm just as heartbroken over this tragedy as any of you. But there's plenty of time later to do what has to be done. Later? Why wait, Grandpa? What because difference will that... Because I won't let anything interfere with today's schedule. Not anything. The year ends and the year begins. Always has and always will. Always? What do you mean, always? I'm not interested in what you think. Pickett, you've got to help us. We don't know what to do. Well, I know what to do. And we're going to do it. Just because of one death, an accident, there's no reason for everybody to panic. Two deaths, Mr. Crockett. Two very strange deaths. Who else? What did you see? Grover's dead. Found him yesterday. Why didn't you tell us? Because I thought it best not to. Didn't want to spoil your day. Whose day? What happened to him? He was in the swamp. He'd been hit by a snake. Is that another accident, Grandpa? Is that another coincidence? Karen and everybody, this conversation is ended. No, it isn't. Look, I don't know what's going on around here, or if it's happening anywhere else. But we're a bunch of damn fools. We don't face the fact that we're in a hell of a lot of trouble. 
and we're going to have to get together to fight it. Keep on talking, Pickett, because you're the only man around here who's saying anything. First of all, we're going to have to try to find Iris, Stewart, and Michael. I'll be very honest with you. I don't think we will. Not alive, anyway. But whether we find them or not, we've got to get off this damn island. All of us, now! We'll take the power boat. If we have to, we'll tow the canoe. And leave this house empty, deserted? I don't really think there's going to be anyone around here to worry about today. Or haven't you noticed? There hasn't been one boat out on that lake all day. Do you think that's happening everywhere, Mr. Smith? Well, if it is, we all better get out of here together. But I forbid it. I control these people, not you. Nobody controls me, Mr. Crockett. Now, I am asking to get off this island by myself or with somebody else. I just want to go. You can leave whenever you feel like it. Mr. Crockett, begging your pardon, I do believe Mr. Smith made good sense. We must all go together. What are you saying? Are you contradicting me? Just because of one small crisis you want to run? Mr. Crockett, really, it's not a small crisis. You got to see that. I see who's loyal and who isn't. That's what I see. Now, if you want to go, both of you will go. Do you? Maybe you haven't heard about it stuck out here in vacation land. Five score and seven years ago, they just started letting people make up their own minds. Mr. Crockett, I wish you'd change your mind for your own safety. Mr. Crockett, do you want to leave? Then leave. Get out. All three of you. Go on. Clint? Yes, sir? Take them across the lake and leave them. Take a good look around. Then get right back here. I'll take care of that, sir. Ladies, gentlemen, we have about five minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your hospitality. I'll write you my thank you note when I get back to civilization. You're in for one hell of a battle, Mr. Crockett. You better get ready for it. Jesse? Jesse? Damn it, where are you?
it. Is there anything we can do to help? No, nothing. Either one of you know how to handle these things? Oh, I'm afraid not. Oh, I've always hated guns. Karen, even under these circumstances, is there any reason why we can't get something to eat? Of course not, Grandpa. I guess the kids must be pretty hungry, too. What would you like? I'd like the menu that was originally planned, starting with a double old-fashioned for me. Right. Well, where's Clint? Shouldn't he have been back by now? All depends on how many beers he took with him, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess so. gasoline around here in the tool shed. See that? Since I went after them, they scattered. And very intelligently, too. The frogs are thinking now, the snails are planning strategy, their brains are as good as ours. Is that your point? Where's Mommy and Daddy? Where's Mommy, Karen? Well, your Daddy hasn't come back from across the lake yet, and I think your Mommy just went outside. I didn't see her out there. Mommy! Wait! Pick it. 
That settles it. We're leaving. Come on, come on. Where are they, Karen? Why isn't Daddy in the boat? We don't know, darling. We just don't know. How are we going to leave? Hey, come here. Grandpa Crockett, Daddy's not in the boat. And it's out there all by itself. She's right, Mr. Crockett. There's no one in it. We're all leaving now. The Crockett's are staying. Grandpa, after all that's happened today, do you think it makes any difference whether we stay? I'm staying and you're staying. But don't you understand? I, I can't let the children stay. And I can't let you stay either. If anyone gives orders in this house, I do. Now, if you want to disobey me, all right, go ahead. Thought you at least were different. Thought you had the Crockett strength, the guts. But if you want to leave, go. Go on, get the hell out of here. And just stand up and be counted. That means are you with me or against me? You understand? Are you going to be all right? You worried about me? Well, thank you for your concern. I'm going to be perfectly all right. I can get in that elevator by myself. I can get into bed by myself. And that's where I'm going, and I'm going to sleep like a baby. Can I take that shotgun? Take anything you like. Don't bring it back. Many happy returns of the day to me. Okay, let's go. Hi, Grandpa. Grandpa? Fourth of July race anyway. Now, when I say I want you very carefully to run down to the dock, okay? And watch out for the frogs. On your mark, get set, go! Nothing done. Stay down, keep it really low. Okay. Hold on the side. Okay. Keep real steady. What happened? We're on a snag.
down. Just hold my hand. Now. Come on, get going down. Anything wrong? We had a little trouble. Can you give us a lift? Oh, sure. I'd be glad to. Hop in. Great. Come on! Car breakdown? No, it's a long story. Thanks for stopping. Well, we're headed for Jefferson City. I just picked my son up at camp. Hi, I'm Bobby. Hi. We've been on this road for practically three hours straight, and you're the first souls we've seen in an hour. It seems very strange that everybody's disappeared inside on a holiday. Hey, you want to see what I caught? They were all over the place at camp. Ever seen a monster big as him before? be dead. It rang. Oh. Oh.